welcome to St. Francis Church. I'm so glad that you've joined us for the service. This service has been filmed around the area of Scathworth, which is just outside Bawtry. Beginning this service in a field of corn. Uh, corn on the cob is being grown on these lovely plants. You can see some of them are really tall and some of them right next to me you can't even see on the screen because they're really quite small. But actually it doesn't matter how tall they are, what matters is how well the corn grows. And of course you need good soil conditions, you need sunshine, we've got plenty today, and we also need rain. And in the Christian life, it actually doesn't matter how tall we are or how uh, big our gifts or skills may be. What's more important is the fruit that grows in our lives. Uh, things such as love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness. They're the, they're the good things that need to grow. And for that, we need the right conditions. We need time in, in the Bible, engaging with the Bible and discovering what kind of things God likes and what he wants us to avoid time in worship where our hearts get open to him and he's able to pour in his spirit into us and time just listening to God and resting with God so we can allow him to love us and the more time we spend doing those sort of things the more fruit grows and we do all of that within an online service and I hope you'll engage really well with all that we do uh, but I also recognize that we all need to do it all week as well every day spending time with God so that the fruit grows so may this service be an acceleration of the fruit in your life but may we also be seeking to grow fruit all through the week because the more fruit we grow uh, the more encouraged we will feel and the more blessed those around us will feel let's begin with a prayer Heavenly Father, thank you for good things that grow in our lives. Please, right at the start of this service, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? Would you open our mind to the things that you want to teach us and give us hearts that are ready to receive and ready to move where you ask us to move and change in the ways that you want us to change and help us to glorify you Amen.
Our God is such a good father. He's always good and he's always kind and he loves us so much. But he wants us to not have stuff in our life that gets in the way of our relationship with him. So let's come to him now with our confession. Almighty God, our heavenly father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Another collect in the Church of England for today. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have another song and then we'll have the Bible reading and our talk. Good morning. Our Bible reading today is Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. 
While I kept silence, my body wasted away, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shortly after I got married and moved to Yorkshire, my dad retired. He'd worked really hard all of his life and, and the kids really appreciated what he'd done. So we wanted to arrange a special surprise retirement party for him. We arranged it from hundreds of miles away, got all the food ready and the venue ready and everything. But every time we phoned them up, it was really hard to keep the secret in. We were so excited about it, but we didn't want to let it slip. So when it finally came to the day and my brother amazingly got him to the venue without him knowing at all, it was such a relief to see that it really was a genuine surprise and he loved the evening and we loved it that we'd kept the secret. Those sort of secrets are hard to keep but you know one day they're going to get revealed. But we also have other types of secrets. Uh, there are, are not nice secrets, things that we've maybe done in our past that we feel great shame and great guilt and regret about and we, it's like we don't want anybody to know about it. But the problem is when we keep those secrets in, it gnaws away at us, it, it, it makes us feel dreadful. And it's no wonder that in this psalm, the psalmist says, happy are those whose sins are forgiven. The first five verses are all about the problem of when the psalmist has sin and when we have sin, and how it gets dealt with. He uses three words for the wrong things that we do and three words for what God does about it. He talks about transgressions, which is when there's a rebellion against God's ways. He talks about sin, which is not hitting the mark, not being good enough. And he talks about iniquity, which is this, this internal twistedness where things go so wrong inside us. But he also talks about three ways that God uh, deals with our sin when we confess it, when we admit to God that we have done wrong. He talks about our sins being forgiven and the meaning behind the word for that is the idea of we've got a burden of sin and God lifts it off us and lifts the burden from us so that we feel free. He talks about the sins being covered, that God covers them and so that we can't see them and he's choosing not to uncover them. And it also, the words talk about uh, um, him not imputing it against us. It talks about him not counting our sins or not keeping the record. And he chooses not to record it as if he's just wiping it clean. And so if God chooses to lift the burden off us, we shouldn't grab the burden and put it back on us once we've confessed. If God chooses to cover these sins over, we shouldn't choose to uncover them. And if God chooses not to count them anymore, we shouldn't keep looking and counting them. Once we have forgive, confessed our sins and been forgiven, we should not dwell on them again. We should almost forget that it has happened. Of course we ask God to help us to learn from it. We shouldn't look back at our sins with shame and guilt, but we should be free. That's why the psalmist says, happy are those whose sins are forgiven. Being 
independent is often seen as a really good quality and this Covid crisis has, has caused a number of people to suddenly feel dependent on others. Those that would normally be seen as healthy and fit find themselves to be Covid vulnerable and so they've had to ask others to get prescriptions for them or others to do the shopping for them and I'm sure it was really hard for lots of people. In our scheme our volunteers are very happy to do it but we do recognise that, that people want to do things themselves as much as they can and now it's August they can but if anyone's watching this and doesn't feel um, happy to go and get prescriptions themselves our volunteers are happy to keep going. In our relationship with God this idea of independence isn't good. God actually wants us to be dependent on him. Sometimes we go through all kinds of struggles and challenges and we just try and work it through ourselves when God wants us to cry out to him. And the psalmist says that those that are forgiven, he also calls them to cry out to God when you're in distress. Ask him to help. Ask him to protect you from the, the floods that come. Ask him to surround you with his protection and with songs of forgiveness of deliverance. So we are forgiven by God, we are loved by God and we can cry out to him for whatever we need, big or small. He just loves us to be dependent on him. When my daughter was just two years old she already wanted to be a grown-up and so when we went for a walk she would always bring her pushchair with her and she'd put her baby in the pushchair she'd get a handbag on and she'd be pushing it along the pavement but some of the time because she was only two she was a little bit wobbly and she'd move towards the road so obviously we would take our hand and try and steer the pushchair back towards the center of the pavement but because she wanted to go in her direction do it her way she would always push our hands away because she she wanted to be independent um, in these woods already today we've seen some dog walkers and when people are walking dogs sometimes the dog is kind of following them very carefully and just going very obediently and other times the dog is going all over the place and it seems as if the dog is walking the owner rather than the owner walking the dog. If we are a, a Christian watching this, if you're a Christian, you've chosen to follow Jesus, that is you've chosen to have him be in charge rather than you be in charge. Um, as a vicar, I've got this special uh, clerical collar that often gets called a dog collar. And when I was ordained, someone bought me a dog's lead to remind me of this. But my training vicar, he said, every time you wear this dog collar, remind yourself that you are on a lead. You're being led by God. And where he goes, you need to go. What he says, you need to listen to and follow. But that's not just for vicars, that's for every Christian. If you've chosen to follow Jesus, that's what you need to do. Follow him wherever he guides you. Verse 8 and 9 of the psalm really emphasise how important it is that we really do follow God. He says we shouldn't be like, like a horse that has to have a bit in its mouth to pull it from side to side to get into the right direction. We should be people that are much more... I'm open to him guiding us. Over the last few weeks I've been doing lots of retreats where I've been trying to listen to God and what he's been saying to me and lots of other people have been doing the same and we all keep feeling that God is calling us to draw closer to him, to receive more of his love and then to be changed from the inside out so that we are ready for whatever the new season holds. He wants us to be listening to him. He wants us to be guided by him. Um, perhaps we need to be not like these horses that have to have a bit inside our mouth, but perhaps more like these horses that the horse whisperers deal with, where the horse is, is already so connected with the owner and the owner just has to do the gentlest nudge and the horse moves in the right direction. That we would be people that are always listening for what God is saying and getting a sense of where he wants us to go, what he wants us to do. And for us as individuals and for us as a church, it's really important that we hear what he's saying for us to do so that what we do then becomes so effective and so fruitful. And that's good news for us, but very good news for our community. Jesus came to earth so that we could have a relationship with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. 
his life, death and resurrection made it possible for us to have our sins removed from us, covered over and not counted against us. We just need to come to him to receive that forgiveness and that freedom. He also wants us to live our life where anything that's bothering us, we can talk to him about and ask for his help, receive his help and his protection. And he very much wants us to be people that are listening to him and being guided by him so that we're in the right place at the right time doing the right things. But it can be hard in these strange times to trust him enough to keep following him but as we do that the psalmist says there are real benefits right at the end of the psalm he contrasts the fate of those that ignore God with those that are trusting in him and he says that there's this great joy for those who trust in God they are surrounded by his steadfast love and are forever praising him we can know that now whatever your life is like at the moment you can know great joy in your heart great peace and great help why don't we pray and ask for some of that now you might want to just prepare your heart open your hands as a sign of openness to him let's invite holy spirit to come and fill us holy spirit thank you that whenever we ask you to come you always do Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us with peace. Help us to trust you. When we hear you speaking to us and showing us a direction, give us the courage to follow you. Help us to be ready to talk to you and depend upon you for the little things as well as the big things. And thank you that because of what you've done, Jesus, we can have forgiveness. Thank you for the gift. Help us this week to be filled with joy and to sing songs of joy wherever we go. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's proclaim our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
are living in strange times, aren't we, at the moment? Things are opening up a lot more, although there are local lockdowns happening. And there are some people, particularly those that have suddenly got new freedoms, that are raring to go. And there are others that are feeling really quite nervous about COVID still. In terms of the life of the church, we have met as a PCC trustees last Monday to talk about how we open things up and when we open things up. We unanimously agreed that we were going to work towards opening things up. We we're going to work through the different guidance and different procedures that we need to do and get things ready. But at the moment, we do not have a set date to open up. But what we have said is that it almost certainly won't be before the end of August. And this length of time, give at least these many weeks, gives us time to do preparations, but also gives us time as a whole church to make some preparations for what kind of a church we're going to be when we open up again. Uh, St. Francis Church, I think, is a wonderful church and lots of amazing things have happened over the years. But we're entering a new season and it's really important that we open up things that are right for this new season. And before um, lockdown, I noticed a number of people, including myself, were probably working a bit too hard and being a bit too busy. And one of the things that many of us have felt God calling us to is to spend more time with him and to get to know what are the specific things he wants us to do and what are some of the things we need to not do anymore when things open up. I've encouraged lots of people to get involved in this process of, of thinking through for themselves as well as thinking through for the church and one person that's taken this really seriously is Elizabeth Hallam, someone who was very busy before lockdown and has made some significant changes in her life already and I interviewed her earlier this week and I'd love you to listen to what she's got to say. Well hi Elizabeth it's really great to see you and thanks for agreeing to be interviewed. I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us all a little bit about your life before lockdown in terms of your relationship with God as well as the things that you were doing um, I guess in the church. Okay well um I, I think I described once before in a, an, an earlier thing that I did for, for these services that um, God has been part of my life for many, many years. And um, so he's always been very important to me. And I thought that in a sense, he was foremost in my life. But I've had a, um, a reflection on that during this time. And um, I, I think I'm now looking for a slightly different type of relationship with him than I had before. Um, after I retired, which was almost exactly eight years ago, um, I was happy that I was able to get involved more in church activities. So I was involved with Meet and Eat for a while um, with the music group, pastoral group, Integrate, PCC and Mustard Seed. And um, I thought was that God was pleased and happy with me being <laughs> involved in all these things. <laughs> Although I was finding it a bit exhausting, to be honest. Um, and then I was challenged towards the end of last year by a sermon which I think you gave, Richard, though I may be wrong in that, it was somewhere that I heard it, which was about the story of Martha and Mary. So... Um, Can you elaborate why that was a challenge for those that don't know that story so well? Uh, it was a challenge. I'll, I'll read you just very quickly from... This is a passion version, and it's Luke eleven forty one 41 to um, 42. The Lord answered her... Um, I should just say, Martha had invited Jesus into her house. I'm assuming she was the older, probably, of the two sisters. Um, and so Martha is actually complaining because she's having to do all the work and Mary's just sitting down listening to Jesus. And he, she's, she's not helping with all the household chores and the preparations for her guests. So um, Martha comes and challenges Jesus about it and says, you know, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all the work myself and you should tell her to get up and help me? And Jesus says, her, his answer is, Martha, my beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled? 
pulled away by all these many distractions, Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She is undistracted and I won't take that privilege from her. So I reflected a lot on that. Um, and I didn't quite know at the time how to disentangle myself from all the things that I've been doing um, and all my church activities. Um, and then we had COVID-19. So when that happened, um, one of the things I did was to revisit the story because obviously I was no longer doing any of this apart from my mustard seed group. And um, I realized that whilst Martha's um, motives as the hostess were good, seeking to serve her guests, her sister Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to him. Um, and I don't believe God wants us to fill our days with busyness and have no time for him. Um, so if I'm not, as it were, plugged into the source, then I will have nothing to offer. Um, you know, there's no electricity going through, as I think you've said before, yeah. if the thing isn't plugged into the socket on the wall. And uh, so I just felt that that was really speaking to me. Okay, so, so during, during the lockdown time, you, yeah. you've decided you'll perhaps want to become a little bit more like Mary and, mm. and sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him and listen to what he's got to say. So what would you say are some of the things that you've been learning um, during this lockdown so that when things open up, um, how, how will it be different? Um, I, think, I think I've realised that he wants a closer relationship with us. Um, he wants something that's more intimate and personal um, and that we need to make, I need to make it a priority to actually sit at his feet and listen. So that means spending time reading his word, praying and listening for what he's actually saying to me and to, to us. Um, and then everything else will flow from that. Um, and I just feel at this time that, you know, we shouldn't waste this opportunity. COVID-19 is awful and it's really shocking for many people. Others of us have, haven't found it quite so bad because I, I think particularly when you're retired and not actually involved in work and worrying about whether there'll be a job and all that kind of thing. Um, it's still not easy to be separated from people like we have been, but it does mean that there's been opportunity to connect with God who is always present with us and uh, isn't going to infect us. <laughs> So, so would you say that at the stage you are now, like a few months after the lockdown began, uh, would you say that you um, feel closer to God, feel more loved? Um, I do feel, yes, I do feel loved. I do feel closer in many ways, although I do find my life is still busy with other things like family and um, my little granddaughter and so on. But um, but there's more of a priority in my mind to put God first and to spend more time with him. Um, recently, we, I've, I've joined with a group of other people doing morning prayer. It's actually finished at the moment. We're not doing it again, but I just found that was so encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, it was so exciting, and we left to start the day feeling really buoyed up and excited and trusting in all that God could do with us and, and for us and through us. So yeah, that, was, that was the really uh, helpful thing. And, you know, I had time to do it, which I didn't before. That's great. Yeah. So um, you described at the beginning just how many things you were involved with. And, and I've been saying to the church, I say every summer, but very much saying in this season, we all need to review what we were doing. Um, we're reviewing whether the, the things that we were doing start back anyway, or if it, something starts back in a different format. Mm -hmm. um, but previously, you would, 
I think you'd admit that you were doing an awful lot and perhaps a little bit too much. So how are you going to go into the new season and not do too many things? Um, I think I have to be very clear from God what he actually wants me to do. Um, you know, he has a, a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And sometimes things that we could easily slot into because maybe even because we enjoy doing them, like playing my violin or something, doesn't mean to say that that's in the new season is what he actually wants me to do. The only thing that I feel I've heard clearly from him is, is that we need to continue with growth group. Um, and um, I, I just think, you know, there's a closeness and, um, and a bond which develops over time with people that you're meeting with regularly. And I, I don't think he wants me to give that up. But um, <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> well, um, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing what the process you've been going through. And, and I, I think you probably guessed, I, I've asked you deliberately because I was aware that you were going through this process. And this is the process I've also been going through. And, and I'd invite um, the whole church to go through this really, really carefully and really seriously about coming closer to God, giving him time, and then really reflecting on, on what life will be like when things open up. And I, I certainly don't want anyone to be as busy as you were before. <laughs> I want people to thrive and flourish. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing a flourishing, thriving Elizabeth when we open up. So thank you so much for sharing what's been going on with you. Okay, you're welcome. Let's pray for Elizabeth and for others. Heavenly Father, thank you for the way that Elizabeth has taken that extra time to be with you over these last few weeks. Would you keep filling her with your love and keep speaking to her about the things that you wanted to do and the things that you wanted to stop doing. And we pray for everyone else who has already begun this process and for those that have not yet begun this process. Help us all to spend additional time with you over these next few weeks. Help us to come closer to you than we've ever been before. Fill us with your love. Thank you that you love St. Francis Church and you, you've loved the things that we've done so far, but you have new things for a new season. Help us to discover what they are. And if some old things are getting revived, help us to know how they need to be revived and how they need to be changed. We pray for the PCC that you'd help them to keep uh, making preparations and help all of the leadership of this church to make the right decisions about when things open up. For our final song, John and Dawn and a few others have put together a song on a cappella. This song, we would sing it in the building, would always involve people jigging and dancing because they love the tune and they love the words. So maybe you want to join in with this fully and stand up and dance if you want. Let's sing our final song.
So as we go into this week, may we know that we are forgiven. Let's not uncover things that we've been forgiven for, but let's leave them to God. Let us know that we're people that can cry out to God for little things and big things. Let us be people that listen to him and are led by him. And let us go into this week filled with his joy. Another blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.